Texans are so bad that they accidentally failed to finish with the NFL's worst record. So I'm here today to fix the unfixable by completely rebuilding the Texans with the goal of winning their first ever Super Bowl. And if I don't bring the Texans a Lombardi trophy within three seasons, I have to wear this Texans jersey in my videos for the next two weeks. I can't do that, man. I can't disrespect my Titans like this. At the start of the offseason, this is the offense that we're working with, and this is the defense. And I'm sure we all can agree this team needs a complete overhaul. Like, how am I supposed to bring a team that starts at a 73 overall to a Super Bowl in just three seasons? Now, each season, we'll have different team-building tasks we have to complete, starting with the challenge of trading up for the number one pick, along with acquiring a QB1. I have to sign at least five free agents and trade away the disgruntled Brandon Cooks. And if we don't successfully complete 100% of each offseason's objectives, I have to release our team's best player. We're already absolutely atrocious as it is, man. We can't just be releasing our best player. Hey, at least some positive activity to start with our strong safety having two available upgrade points. Now first bit of business, we do have a few tough decisions to make on what players we bring back. Like keep in mind we have $85 million to spend and I still have some big players I want to bring in. I really don't know if any of these players are good enough for us. I mean I will give Desmond King a nice little two year offer and he's of course testing out free agency. And unfortunately the only guy I care about bringing back, I can't even pronounce his name. Again I think this three year deal is a very good offer, a really good 78 over overall star defensive end and at least he's coming back first official of many deals done and i'm happy about it but the rest of you guys i really don't care keep in mind we do have the number two overall draft pick so trading up to number one hopefully won't break the bank but i feel like it'd be smart to go ahead and get rid of brandon cooks and see what team wants to take his contract and hopefully find a team that'll give us something pretty good in return if i simply click just get offers hopefully the cpu will give me some pretty good deals and to be completely honest a lot of these are extremely stinky. Like Elijah Mitchell's a good offer, but I want more, man. I want like a second round pick. I'd even probably take a third round pick. And to be completely honest, I feel like this Titans deal is the best offer that we got. But I have complete faith in my abilities as a GM. So I feel like manually I can get a better deal for us. Maybe the Chiefs will give us their late first round pick. And it's kind of close. Oh, the Packers could really use a good wide receiver. How about a second to fifth round pick from the Packers? Oh my God, that's not even close. But a trade for just a second round pick was accepted, and I think that's okay value. I don't mind another second round pick. I feel like that's something positive accomplished. And now to trade up for that number one overall pick, what exactly would the Bears want for this? If I just ask them what they want, it looks like they don't want anything way too crazy. Not gonna lie, all three of these are extremely tempting. But again, I think I'm gonna test out my skills as a GM and try to do this the old fashioned way. Any particular players you're interested in, Chicago? Chicago. Like, honestly, I could trade away every single one of these guys for all I care. This has got to be one of the funniest things I've seen in my 27 years here on this earth. We literally just got the number one pick for our number two and a couple of pickles. I think it's just the work of a talented GM. And while we're here making some moves, are there any teams that want to bite on Davis Mills? Like, just give me a third or fourth round pick and I take that. Which one of these poor teams are really the most desperate? I mean, the Panthers number one need is a QB. And I did get some offers from other teams across the league, but I really don't think I want to bite on any of these deals. Like, I really just want draft picks. Like, there's no way. The Panthers give me a second round pick for Davis Mills. Like, there's no shot. I'm gonna try it and I was right. But honest to God, they might actually bite for their late second round pick. Please, bro, we need all the miracles possible. Oh, it's so close. What if we offer the tight end that we just got? And I think we also got ourselves a crappy center. Is this enough to see the deal through? Yes, it is. Let's go. How did we just Mickey Mouse a second round pick from this trade? I'm the ultimate GM. I mean, we're up to two first round picks, three second round picks, and two thirds. Like, we're gonna do some damage in this draft. Finally, time for free agency, and we have a lot of money to spend. The most exhilarating part is seeing what free agents are even available. Be a good crop, and it looks like there are some really good players we could bring in. I just have to make sure I'm smart with my money, though. And do I sign a Tom Brady, Geno Smith, or Jimmy G, or do I just get a quarterback in the draft? For starters, we do need a new wide receiver number one of the question question is which one of these guys do I actually offer? And I think our best bet might actually be going after Juju Smith. I mean, I will give him a pretty fat three year, about $30 million contract. And off the bat, we're easily the number one offer. I honestly wouldn't mind bringing in a second receiver either, if it makes sense. And the guy that I feel could really, really fit here in Houston is Isaiah McKenzie. Nothing crazy, just another pretty decent three year, about 
$15 million offer. That's another guy it looks like we're leading for. And words can't describe how bad I need a new middle linebacker. So I will throw every dollar possible at TJ Edwards so we can bring him in. And it looks like at least currently we're blowing all the other offers out of the water. And we honestly need all the help in the world at outside linebacker. And bringing in Josh Allen from a division rival could be huge. Like, look at our current state at outside linebacker. So I feel like I'm extremely justified in offering Josh Allen a six-year, $66.6 million deal. Actually, let me bump that down a little bit. I don't like that number. Okay, so still by far blowing away the Ravens offer. I think another position we've got to add is quality at the cornerback position, especially because Desmond King's leaving. And although all these guys understandably don't want to come to Houston, I am still going to try to bring in Byron Murphy. And again, it looks like we're in the lead. And hopefully we did get a majority of our guys. And it looks like Byron Murphy signed, so we're one for one. At wide receiver, it does look like we got Juju. We also get Isaiah McKenzie. Yes, we did. We're three for three. We also got TJ Edwards. That's the big one. It does look like we got leapfrog though by the New York Giants. We could go in and offer another contract. But the question, is it the smart thing to do? I mean, I guess at this point, like, why the heck not? Oh, the Giants still have us beat. Should I just try to get ourselves a solid tight end in Mike Gesicki? Like, look at the state of our tight end group. And we're not even in his top five. We up the big time, and it looks like we're just tied with the other three teams. Gonna put in a little offer for Zach here, because we definitely need depth in the D-line. And we got a big lead on him. Speaking of D-line, we need one of these guys to help us at D-tackle. I mean, Matthew will definitely do for a couple years. I withdrew the Josh Allen offer, so I think I'm just gonna put a little bit more into this Mike Gesicki offer, and just hope we get ourselves a new stud tight end. And we did! Let's go! Matthew here also accepted, as did Zach Allen, so our defensive line's gonna look so much better. So I think we made ourselves a nice little seven quality signings to add to the squad. I told you guys you can trust me as a GM. And we actually grab ourselves one more super quality signing for our offensive line. I guess our only choice now is to acquire a QB1 in the draft. And I think it's safe to say in the draft we also could add some offensive linemen and probably another wide receiver. And I think it's super safe to say that we could use some outside linebackers and a free safety. Oh gosh, dude, wish me luck. I mean, I could just always trade back. Like, these are some pretty good offers. But I believe here, with the number one pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, RBT and the Houston Texans are gonna go and select Bryce Young. He's just too good, man. I cannot pass up on him. I know his injury concerns, but I think if we can protect him, he'll be okay. And hopefully lead us to a Super Bowl so I don't have to wear this thing for another two weeks. And we have another pick here at number 12, and I just have to be smart with what I do here. And I really do believe with everybody left on the floor, is Quentin Johnson worth it? Do I just pull the trigger? We really do need a quality wide receiver number two. Or do I do the smart thing and actually protect Bryce like I said, we need to do and just take Peter Skaronsky. Oh, this, this is going to hurt. I think this really is going to hurt. But I'm going to do the smart thing here and go offensive lineman and hopefully keep Bryce Young healthy. Please be good for us, Peter. Plenty of picks left to go in this draft. And just keep in mind how important this draft class is to build for the future. There's so many different directions I could go at wide receiver, but I cannot believe that Jackson Smith and Josh Downs are still available. And I think I'm actually gonna go with Josh Downs. I think he was actually the safer of the two wide receiver options. And very unfortunately, it looks like all the super solid outside linebackers are already taken. Oh, that's a huge L. I think I'm actually gonna go cornerback here. You add Tyreek Stevenson with the newly added Byron Murphy, and I think you got yourself a solid one-two cornerback duo. And now before anybody steals the last potential good outside linebacker for us, I'm gonna grab Jack Campbell maybe a little early, but I think he's gonna be an immediate starter for us and a huge pick. We need free safety so freaking bad. I think I'm gonna go with Brandon Joseph. Oh, please don't be a massive mistake. I really don't think I can pass up on Kalijah Kansi. This guy might actually end up going first round. We could use more linebacker depth. I think Ivan Pace is a super underrated linebacker. Maybe this man right here could be our long-term center. I mean, I might as well just go receiver. Rakeem Jarrett's a solid player. I don't know how he's still available in round six. I guess we just keep taking corner. Jalen Jones 
Dolphins really like this guy. Told you guys I need all the outside linebackers I can get. How on earth is Chase Brown still available? Like, we don't need a running back, but I think he could be good for us, a good backup. And for our last pick, I just guess we go offensive line. And at the click of a button, we'll know whether or not we had a stinker. Just tell me I had some half-decent picks. And it looks like we hit big on a bunch of these guys. What in the world, dude? We got so many 70-plus overall players. I mean, Chase Brown in the sixth even was a 70 rated. Now that, my men right there, is an incredible draft class. The start of next season, and this team already looks so much freaking better. And yeah, the defense still has some holes, but it still looks better than last year. Told you guys we were gonna make a few moves and acquired a third round pick in the process. Last bit of Deadwood I'm getting rid of, and I got another third round pick in return. And I'm bringing in our man Cam Newton to be Bryce Young as backup. Somehow already, our sixth round pick, Chase Brown, upgraded to a star development. And Brevin Jordan was our only player to improve in the preseason. And this is your official Houston Texans starting offense heading into the start of next season. Really hope the defense doesn't let us down this season. With this being my first real season as GM, I mean, I think I'd be happy with just a playoff burn. I really think it is possible to make the playoffs in this week division. That would give us so much confidence going into a second season. And playoffs it is, my friends. 10-7 and 7 on the year. I just don't know if we'll be able to get past Kansas City in the first round. Our offense was about mid, but our defense was top five in the league. I mean, that's actually super solid from a rookie quarterback. 38 touchdown passes to only six interceptions. Running game was kind of mid this season, but at least we do have two young running backs that's going to get better as we go along. And yeah, I do think we still need a little more talent at the receiver position. Zach Allen was a massive signing, and thank God we brought back Ogbonia. So I really do think with the team we've already assembled, we really have set our team up for the future. Maybe even the present here if we can beat KC. I can't believe now that Bryce Young's up to an 83 overall. Can you believe that Bryce Young as a rookie placed top five in the MVP voting? Which of course means he won offensive rookie of the year. Hilarious enough, we had three players in the top four. Didn't have a defensive rookie of the year, but Jack Campbell did come in third place. Imagine the scenes we actually make the Super Bowl here with the Houston Texans in just one season. No shot, bro. No shot. Absolutely zero shot. No, 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 bro. I don't even believe it. I don't even freaking believe it. Oh my god, bro. This might actually be my best GM job ever. Oh my god, dude. Imagine we do all of this and lose in the freaking Super Bowl. The Packers had to go through the Eagles in Philadelphia. They had to go through Dallas and the Panthers, and this is just not the Super Bowl matchup I expected at all. I don't mind another Bryce Young upgrade going into the Super Bowl. I just actually cannot believe we brought this team to a Super Bowl in just one season. Just keep in mind, this is the same franchise that just a season ago completely failed at being the worst team in the league when they tried to. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't expect to make it here so fast, but I will be so sad if we do not win it here. I'd like to thank Manscaped.com for sponsoring today's video. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I love my Manscaped products. And out of nowhere, Manscaped is finally launching a beard trimming and styling routine. I want to introduce you all. Oh man. Hey, that's my underwear. I want to introduce you all to the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Look at this pristine kit of beard hedging beauty. Like, what's the point in taking the time to trim your balls if your facial hair already made a bad first impression? The Beard Hedger Trimmer has a powerful 7200 RPM motor and a titanium-coated T-blade that can cut through the thickest of thick hair in a single stroke. No matter your preference, you can choose from 20 different hair cutting lengths with the zoom wheel that only uses one guard. Their beard trimmer is waterproof, cordless, and rechargeable, so you can trim in the shower if you'd like to create less of a mess. Like, look at this thing. It's an absolute beauty. Look how pristine and slick it looks. Also in the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, we got some beard shampoo, along with some handy dandy beard conditioner. Also have some beard oil here and a lot of other goodies. And you can get the Beard Hedger Pro Kit today by either clicking the link in the description box below or simply going to manscaped.com and get 20% off today plus free shipping if you use promo code RBT at checkout. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code RBT at manscaped.com. Didn't get off to a quick start. We're down 3 nothing. We tie things up 3 all. Packers kick a field goal. We get a big stop. This is the weirdest Super Bowl ever. Hardly any points are being scored. And all the points are being scored by the Packers. Why can't we score, man? Go into the fourth and make it 16-10. to 10. Packers score. We don't score. We lose. 
Oh, now did we lose? We literally just brought the Texans all the way to the Super Bowl in just one offseason only to lose. Oh my gosh, bro. What happened? Oh, just motivation, boys. It's just motivation. I'm locked in. I'm telling you next season. No, not season three. Next season, this is going to be us hoisting this Lombardi trophy. Again, starting the offseason, we have some tough decisions to make on whether or not we sign some of these super big free agents. And on top of that, I have to acquire another first round pick. I have to trade for an X-Factor defender. I have to trade for a new wide receiver one. And again, I have to sign at least five free agents. With Laramie Tunsil being our highest overall player, I think it is absolutely imperative that we bring him back, although he is 30 years old. Like, maybe a four-year deal will be enticing enough. And yes, it is. He's coming back. That's huge. I do think I want to bring Titus Howard back. We'll give him a nice little two-year deal. And he's coming back. I mean, Kim was a good backup to Bryce. Might as well bring him back. Now, how in the world do I go about acquiring another first round pick? I'm gonna have to trade a solid player away. I did have to trade some quality away in return, but at the end of the day, we do get ourselves an extra first round draft pick. At least I completed a challenge. And would you just take a fat look at that as we just got ourselves our brand new starting outside linebacker who also happens to be an X Factor. I told you guys, I'm the best GM on planet Earth. I didn't even think about the fact that we literally stole Shaq Leonard from the Colts. Now, do I go ahead and try to strike for a new white receiver number one no shot bro absolutely zero shot this just got accepted for our number one pick next season we bring in Jalen Waddle in our new starting center I told you guys I'm GM of the year this is how our team is looking and we still have the freaking draft and free agency to go just went ahead and grabbed another solid cornerback why because I can that gladly made Steven expendable because I get myself a solid free safety in return we still have 68 million dollars to spend in free agency checking the free agency class is always the most exhilarating thing to experience please be a good class and there's definitely some studs that we can target oh my gosh bro like what do we even do here i think we might stay away from nick bosa but go for the much cheaper option in jeff simmons i'm telling you right now though big jeff would completely transform our defense our offer is looking pretty good i mean tristan Wirfs is just sitting there do i just go ahead and take one of the best tackles in all of football we'll give him another one of those low risk offers Oh, right up there with the Titans and Bears. We for sure need to anchor in the defensive line. Grover Stewart, I'll even give you a nice two-year deal. Things aren't looking good with Grover. I mean, I wouldn't mind bringing in Bobby Wagner on a Mickey Mouse one-year contract. Now, let me go ahead and see if I can grab any of the big guys. Tristan Wirfs off the get-co signed with the Bears. Yo, we got Big Jeff, though. That is actually huge, bro. Like, no pun intended. We also got Grover Stewart and Bobby Wagner, which is pretty massive for what was already a top five deal defense. I honestly might also sign Brandon Ayuk just because I think we could get him on a pretty team-friendly deal. I'm really offering J.J. Watt, man. Imagine J.J. Watt coming out of retirement and ending his career with the Texans with a Super Bowl ring. And the book of poetry is on to its next chapter as J.J. Watt does sign with the Texans. Please tell me we got Brandon Ayuk as well. And we didn't. The Titans grabbed him. I still have to get one more free agent, but I don't know who to even sign. I mean, Maybe I just go and offer AJ Terrell so I can potentially afford him. AJ Terrell, a six-year contract. What do you mean I don't have salary? Moving some contracts around, getting another draft pick. I worked in a solid contract, and it does look like we're leading for AJ Terrell. Barely, just barely. Bro, if we actually get him, he could send our defense over the edge, bro. He might be the man to bring us to Super Bowl. Oh, the Lions got him. Gosh dang it. What do I do, man? What do I do? Maybe I just grab Adrian Amos and convert him to free safety? I'll give you a three-year deal, although you're 69 years old already. <laughs> he rejected us too. You know what? I think you're looking at your brand new Houston Texans punter, and it looks like we have ourselves one of the best punters in the league. I can't believe we still have draft picks to add to this already incredible squad. I just don't know what we should do with our picks. Like, we really badly need a long-term answer at free safety, and Malachi Moore out of Alabama might be the answer. Just please don't be a bad pick, and he does have hidden development, which is always a good sign. It might might be that Alabama bias in me, but I think here I'm going to go with Ja'Cory Brooks, our second Bama player of the first round. Might be dumb, but I think we just got a solid long-term backup quarterback to Bryce Young. I mean, I have just got to take a quarterback named Storm Duck. Like, there's just 
There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Jack Nelson out of Wisconsin looks pretty tasty for some decent tackle depth. Yes, I'm taking another cornerback because this guy's still left and he's projected a first or second rounder. I mean, he has hidden development, so I think that was worth it. So the official draft results, I think, again, we had an absolute monster draft class. Five rookies, 72 rated or higher. Don't mind if I do. I think this offense, without a doubt, is 100% Super Bowl caliber. So is the defense now, too. While we're at it, why not get another massive young upgrade on the offensive line? And why not just go ahead and add ourselves another top five rated right outside linebacker? Now, this is the Texans' official offense heading into next season. And this is the official defense. And my God, bro, this might be the best unit in the entire league. We're winning the Super Bowl this year for J.J. Watt. We've got to. I'm actually so confident that I'm setting our season goal as win the Super Bowl. Come on, man. Let's win this division again. And most importantly, just don't make me look stupid. So I'm not going to lie. Eight and nine is not exactly how I planned it. But heck, at least we're in the playoffs. Keep in mind, if I don't win the Super Bowl this season, all I have left is next year. And if we fail then, I have to wear this jersey for another two weeks in my videos. I can't continue to disrespect my Titans like this. I mean, I think that's a slight improvement from last year offensively, defensively. Look at that dudes we even improved from our top five status last year i mean i have to admit 26 interceptions is quite the regression from last season we still can't run the ball worth a crap i mean if it wasn't for the waddle trade we might not even have made the playoffs same thing with jeff simmons without him we'd probably go 0 and 17 that's bad bryce like i don't understand now what are the odds we actually make back-to-back -back super bowls after an eight and nine season i mean crazier things have happened but like i'm expecting a first round exit or i'm expecting and just back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Like, where the freak has this came from? I'm telling you, bro, if the Houston Texans are watching this, offer your boy a job. It's a joke. It would take a lot of money to pry me away from my Titans. But we literally took down the one, two, and three seeds to make it to the Super Bowl against the one seed Niners. I would absolutely love to win this Super Bowl here so we don't have to go into a do-or-die season number three. Let's get off to a fast start unlike last year. We get a three-nothing lead. Come on, let's tack on more. Let's tack on more six-nothing. We've got to convert touchdowns, no more field goals. I only have them held to zero points going into the second half is 16 to nothing. What the freak is going on? The Niners have not scored a point, 26 to nothing. It's an absolute beat down, let's go! 33 to seven, and just like that, your Houston Texans are Super Bowl champions. Oh man, as a Titans fan, this hurts, but as your Texans GM, I love it. We've officially brought the Houston Texans to the top of the top of the NFL in literally just two seasons. Houston, I'm waiting on my job offer. Now, if you enjoyed that one, click right here to watch me fix my Tennessee Titans. And let me tell you, if you thought this team was a God squad, the team we put together here was mental.